Hey guys, it's Valentine's Day soon, so I wanted to show you a slightly more elevated makeup look for date night so that you see some new products that I've been trying and loving, but also just to give you how I elevate my everyday look. There's not much to separate out the days um, right now, so something like Valentine's is a good excuse to pull out a little bit more makeup than we've currently been wearing and just feel good about ourselves in the process of getting ready. So if you're planning your Valentine's look, grab a glass of champagne and join me. All right, so I'm just gonna pin my hair back and my hair is kind of styled. So I'm just gonna twist these sections. I kind of like a bit of a wave with back off my face, which kind of encourages them to wave in the right direction. So for date night skin, you want sheeny, dewy, touchable skin. And I'm gonna go with Surat Dew Drops in shade number four for that, because I really do think it delivers a really polished, elegant finish. The colors are perfect, because they have this one in particular has a nice, subtle yellow undertone, which for my skin is ideal. Now, don't judge me on my Ravage Beauty Blender, guys. I really need another one, but it is clean. Cleaned with a flawless cleanser, which is actually an excellent cleanser for all your makeup brushes, FYI. A little cleaner hack. And I'm gonna focus on my T-zone where I'm most prone to a bit of redness. And given that Red wine is one of my favorite tipples. I like a bit of roast beef or good steak frite. That's the kind of thing I would like to eat on Valentine's. Um, yeah, so I need to be conscious of those rosy undertones coming out with a glass of nice super Tuscan or something. So yeah, I put most of the product, and you notice I dabbed it onto my skin first before starting to blend it. So, you know, Dew Drops is precious. It's quite a pricey foundation, but it's, oh my goodness, so beautiful on the skin. And so it just blends and merges with your skin. And then I really don't often put that much product up here. It's really super, super sheared out, especially over the temples very little on that outer part of the cheek as well. So using the fat end of my blender to put the most of the product and smush it into the skin. And then the pointy end, stick it with the pointy end, um, around the kind of the corners and crevices of the nose. And the good thing about this foundation as well is that it's so real skin-like. You don't have to do complicated things with your neck. Because I really don't have time or patience for a product that needs blending all the way down my neck. It's just too expensive on the old dry cleaning. Right, so that's it all worked in. I'll do a little bit of, you know, final blending at the end of everything together because we don't like edges. Um, that's looking good as a base. Now, a little bit of under eye concealer, because again, dark shadows just aren't romantic. And I'm gonna use an old Sisley concealer, concealer brush. And I'm just gonna use like a tiny bit in the tear trough. And then the little hollow, you'll see just there. I'm careful not to allow it to collect. But yeah, just that little hollow. I'm gonna blend that all in with a Baby Beauty Blender. And I'm using Laura Mercier's Secret Concealer number two. And those concealers are really well chosen in terms of the color of the pigments. They contain that peachy quality, also seen in the Sizzly concealers for under eye. And I think that is one of the most useful things in a concealer is its peachiness neutralizes the blue. You don't really get blue tones anywhere else on the face. So this is a, 
a fairly specific need of under eye concealer. And so I use it right in that hollow above the eye as well. Wendy Rowe taught me that back in the day. So not too much product needed tonight, thankfully. I mean, even if one is just going to one's living room or one's kitchen for one's self-made, you know, takeout meal. Still wanna look good in the candlelight now, don't we? Um, so a tiny bit of concealer, although I'm not too worried that there's much to conceal. I always put a tiny bit, I have a couple of little red vessels in my nose and I'm using this airbrush concealing pen from IT Cosmetics. One criticism is it does get a bit sproggy around the edges as you put it in and out of the cap. <laughs> sproggy, is that a real word? You know what I mean. Um, and I'm using a bit of soft matte concealer, soft matte complete concealer from NARS. I'm using vanilla, but it could easily have been custard. I find that I can use either. And then I'll use the fluffy end of the brush to just blend out where concealer would, again would just tend to cling to the inner crescent of that groove by the nose. Okay, nothing else I'm especially drawn to for additional concealer. So that's that. Um, you know, for a big event, I might put a tiny bit of concealer in this zone, concealer powder. And I, I, I'm not going to do that tonight, but you know, for special occasions, or if you're feeling particularly oily, it's something that, you know, is fine. And if I'm going to do powder, as I do for filming, um, I use a secret brightening powder from Laura Mercier. Um, I think it just comes in one shade, it's number one, but not tonight. Right, should we do eyes? Now, what I really wanted to share today are some new Surratt products. And Surratt was my makeup brand of the year last year. And I can say that the love affair is going to continue well into 2021. And, and certainly these lash curlers have become something of a staple. They just feel so much more solid and many of the other ones I've tried. And I have tried many. So lashes are such a, an important part of seduction. I mean, how can you bat at your loved one without a good lash going on? I also think they're a way of building definition into the face, a bit like we do with the brows. You know, my holy trinity of brows, lashes, hair and skin, and teeth, as somebody pointed out to me the other day. Um, but I guess I'm talking about things within my remit. Teeth are very much the remit of my friend, Dr. Uchana Okoye, who is a phenomenal dentist. Um, but lashes, so plenty of density in the lash area. Um, so those are curled. I'm gonna do my brows now, and then we'll come to eyelids and lashes. Um, adornment shortly. Now this is the Surratt eyebrow pencil. Again, there's something just nice and weighty about the way these products feel in the hand. The packaging is exemplary and they really are a brand where they create beautiful objects that are a pleasure to use and I, I love that, a little bit of everyday luxury in, in, what, we, in what we use. So I like a nice teacup or a coffee mug in the morning and I, you know, something beautiful to elevate that simple action that we do daily. Especially right now where we all need a little bit of extra self-care, which isn't self-indulgence, I don't think. I find myself spending a little bit more on cosmetics. My skincare is pretty stable. I, you know, use mostly the flawless products at the moment. I did design them quite selfishly for my own skin's needs, but uh, thankfully they're quite versatile. But um, I have my fun with cosmetics. You know, getting ready for a date, you're kind of putting on a mindset, aren't you? To elevate oneself out of the, the current status of a bit of tinted sunscreen, you know, lip balm, and then 
comfy, loungy clothes. I hope those of you getting ready for a nice evening are, you know, pulling out a pencil skirt or a silky blouse or, you know, even just a gorgeous robe. Um, whatever it is that makes you feel good about yourself in a way that many of us haven't really felt for quite a while because this whole experience kind of creates a kind of a sameness in our days, which is also, I think, somehow echoed in, you know, how much effort we're making. So this is a little bit of Surratt, uh, deep brown, uh, expressionist brow pomade. And again, a very considered approach to application. So it's got this dinky little brush that the excess gets wiped off as you take it out of the tube. So you don't, you don't splatter too much. And I just, I like a, an upswept brow, an upswept lash and an upswept brow. Okay, so we're good. Now, this is also quite nice from Surratt. As you can see, this is a, practically a Surratt dedicated video. This is Lid Lacquer in Hadaka, um, which is a rather gorgeous, almost skin toned nudie peach. And, you know, I have often in the past put a swipe of lip gloss on my eyelids because a glossy lid's kind of sexy, I think. And I think this color really is nice because it's not a shadow as such, it's just an echo of the natural tones that we see around the eyes. And I think it just makes the eye color pop a little. I think it would be good if you had blue or green eyes. So that's just nothing that you would really notice, but it just makes everything look a little prettier. I was playing with a rather lovely navy blue liner. So I think we can try this. So can you see that? And I mean, again, it's like a calligraphy pen practically, just so well appointed, really balanced. The nib is a thing of great delicacy, which is just what you need whenever you're attempting to do you know, things outside your job description on camera. So um, we're gonna have a little go here, expect errors. So the way I approach liquid liner, if I'm doing a baby cat eye flick thing, and I only do like a tiny cat flick these days, is to line up the pen tip with the lower lash line. So essentially it's going that way. And that kind of corresponds with where the end of the brow lies. So. I put the flick in first and then I draw along the line. And then, yeah, that's kind of the direction I wanna go. Let me go around the bend. So the blue is so subtle, but navy eyeliner just feels French to me. And I'm feeling French. That wasn't bad. Um, yeah, in like little sections. And so you don't attempt to draw across the whole lid in one go, that's just, for professional people and crazies. Um, but yeah, I think it just gives the eye a little distinction, a little meowy something. Now, for the other side, I have a slightly different technique. I actually line half the outer lid first in little segments, and then I do my cat flick at the end. Okay, so, I mean, a bit like eyebrows, sister is not twins, but I think they're roughly in the same place, and, you know, it's gonna be candlelit, so I think we're good. Right, let's do a little bit of mascara now. Wouldn't be any point in doing an eyeliner if we didn't also do a mascara. So I'm gonna use the Kevin O'Quan Le Volume Mascara. You know I'm obsessed with these little tiny spindly brushes rather than the big, big ones. I just find they deliver too much product for my taste. I like my mascara at the roots and I like the ends to be relatively mascara free. I like the sort of the undone done lash, if you will. So you get the up sweep and you have a feeling of density, but not clumping. Then the good thing about these, you can easily do the lower lashes. 
I may need to brush these through. They're a bit spidery, but I quite like a lower lash for evening. You want as much of that kind of doe-eyed quality. Now, I will sometimes just wipe through the brush before doing lower lashes, but I think we're okay here. We'll just brush through after. That's a bit too Birkin-esque, but you know, tell me all your secrets. <laughs> right, so let's uh, get rid of that. I have little gaps in my lower lashes, which is annoying. <laughs> It's like a little bald spot. So next we're going to do a little bit of highlighting and we're going to use Surat Torche Lumiere in Diamante. Um, and I'm just going to use my finger, I think, because I think these things can end up with like, you know, overstrobed kind of action. So I'm just kind of doing it in that C along the top of the cheekbone. I'll put a little bit of this on first and then do blush and just kind of meld it. But I guess it's kind of just working with the natural highlight. This is good because it just catches the light, but it isn't sparkly. We'll do Cupid's bow and like maybe a dab at like that inner corner just for kind of a that wide-eyed look. Not too much, just a touch. Then let us put in a little cheek. So a nice flat brown biscuit, a Tulia Westman. So very different in terms of the optics. You want something matte, no red in it to give you that hollowed out under cheekbone thing. Honestly, I really do need to get a new beauty blender. I'm writing a note to myself. So, so that's kind of the top and the bottom of the cheekbone defined. Now let's put in the middle. So a bit of still a convertible color in Camellia, you know, a nice <laughs> well-used down to pan, peachy brown, which is just good for those of us with a little bit of rosy redness in the complexion. So I'm just gonna put that in place and I'll blend it up with my blender. So it's kind of like the three elements to defining, I guess, your bone structure and then adding a bit of healthy freshness. Do lots of work for <laughs> very subtle effect, but it does build a dimension to the face in terms of bone structure being enhanced. So I think that all looks good. And then, oh, just catch a little blemish. Oh, there we go. Just like a little, okay. Be gone, blemishes, you have no place in date night. Right, and then the pièce de la résistance. I did contemplate doing a red lip, and if you would like to see a makeup look with a red lip, leave me a comment down below, but I just think for date night, if you're gonna be kissing, nude works better. But maybe the idea of a red lip for date night is something worth considering. Right, so straight from the bullet, and then I'm going to do, mm, love this, a little lip liner just to enhance the lip contour. So such a pretty nude. I did a reel about this, Rosé Ombre, I think it's called. Now, lip liner. And then finally, a little tiny bit of liner just to bring out the cupid's bow. And then I create a little shadow under the lower lip. I mean, you can go further with this, of course, but 
your date probably knows what you look like. And I think to suddenly acquire an extra third of volume because you put the line down underneath the lip, <laughs> which is just a little bit, not what we're going for here. So yeah, a little bit upper, I would say upper sixth, lower sixth, and then the corners. Drawing in your corners makes such a difference. It's such a small thing, but especially as we age, we lose a little bit of the, the horizontal, the lateral projection of the lip. So I think just putting the corners in restores dimension. And yeah, I think that's everything. Okay, so, I mean, I think I'm ready for my glass of red wine, I think. Um, Eyes, brows, lashes, skin, subtly enhanced, a little bit of something more intense happening around the eye area, but yeah, that's my date night look, guys. Hope you like it.